Good morning, good afternoon, good evening class. This is Mr. Arosena. And to continue on with our study of derivative rules, today I'm going to talk about chain rule. Chain rule is great because it allows us to deal with functions like this. Right. So earlier in class today I asked, can we differentiate the following equation or the following function? Uh, we a because we studied a lot of derivative rules previously, so can we do this? Okay, well, to recap what we talked about earlier in this chapter, we talked about the power rule. So, power rule stated that if I had x to the power of n, the derivative would just be n x to the power of n minus 1. And then we talked about the product rule, or if you had two functions, the derivative, or two functions multiplied together, the derivatives would just be fg prime plus gf prime. And then we had the quotient rule. If two functions were divided by each other, we would get the following. The derivative would be gf prime minus fg prime, all divided by g squared. Okay. And then we had various trig derivative rules also, which were in the previous video. But do any of these help us solve a situation like this, where we have... It's kind of like a power rule type question, because I can rewrite this question to be 1 plus x squared to the power of 1 half. And I mean, we could apply the power rule to this, so the derivative of f prime of x, we could say, well, it's just a power rule application. At least, it seems to be a power rule application at first. But what do I do with this, with all the stuff, with the function on the inside, what do I do with that? Do I leave it as 1 plus x squared? Do I take the derivative of it, derivative of it, make it 2x? It, then if I do take the derivative of it, what happens to that derivative? Does this get changed to 2x? Does it become multiplied by 2x? Do I add the 2x? Well, what happens? As it turns out, um, the derivative, if I have a function within a function, like in this case, if I have a function, if f of x, so big F of x, happens to be a function of a function like this, f of g of x, or as uh, someone pointed out in class, this is fog of x, okay, it turns out that the derivative of the function happens to be the derivative of f of x, okay, of g of x, so derivative of f of x evaluated at g of x, times the derivative of g of x. So it's basically the derivative of the first outside, the outermost function, evaluated at the inside function, times the derivative of the inside function. Okay? Now this rule is what we call the chain rule. So this is chain rule. This is the chain rule of derivatives. Chain rule or derivatives. Okay. And you can sort of think of it as the second derivative, the derivative of the inside function is being chained to the derivative of the first function. That's, that's how I think of it. That's why I, I, that's how I remind myself it's called the chain rule. Okay. And the proof of it is in your textbook. It's in a lot of places. Um, but I'm going to take an engineer approach to this and proof is, is, is not that necessary to understand how to apply the chain rule. The proof shows a chain rule does work, and then we're going to apply it in a bunch of different examples. And again, if you are curious to see what the proof is, it is in your textbook, as well as there are probably other places on the internet to find it. All right, let's go through some examples. So the first example here is let's differentiate the function sine x squared and then the function sine squared x. Okay, so these are two, two different functions. Now when I dif differentiate a function like this, when I first started learning this, I thought of the function as two separate functions. I broke it down into what is my outside function and what is my inside function. Okay, The outside function I'm going to call f of x. So here, in y equals sine x squared, I look at what is the outermost function. The outermost function happens to be this part. So the outermost function is going to be sine. And I'm going to put, I'm going to call x squared, uh, I didn't do this in class, but I'll call x squared u. So we'll call u is equal to x squared. So we'll call this sine u is my outermost function. The inside function is this. 
So the inside function, we'll call this g of x, is going to be x squared. So my function f of x is equal to f of g of x. Well, let's take the derivative of it. According to the chain rule, the derivative is the derivative of the outermost function at g of x times the derivative of g of x. So the outermost function is happens to be sine. So the derivative of sine is cosine of x. But x, remember, this is u, or derivative of u, we'll put u there. u is really just x squared, plus x squared. And then we multiply it by the derivative of g prime of x. g prime of x happened, or sorry, g prime x happens to be the derivative of x squared, which is just 2x. Now we can clean this up a little bit. So usually we put the 2x in front of the cos. So there you go. So this is the derivative. This is f prime, or big F prime of x, where f prime was this. Yeah. Now, let's do the same thing for this one. So, I'll remind myself, what is the outside function? What is the inside function? Okay. For something like this, it might be easier to think of it as this, sine x squared. So, my outside function, I'm going to call u squared. And I'm going to remind myself u is equal to sine x. The inside function is going to be called uh, sine x. And then we just take our derivatives. So f prime of x happens to be the derivative of f of x of g of x times the derivative of g prime of x. And I should label this. This is what f of x is. This is what g of x is. So the derivative of f is going to be this. Derivative of 2u is really 2 times u. But then remind ourselves u is actually not u. u is actually sine x. So it will be 2 times sine x. And then we multiply that by the derivative of g prime. g prime, while g is just sine x, derivative of sine is cosine. So this becomes 2 times cos x. There you go. This is my derivative. F prime of x. Oh, so f, the derivative of sine x all squared is 2 sine x times cos x, which is much different than the deriv derivative of sine x squared. Okay. Right. Now, why did I use the u notation here? Well, in Leibniz notation, um, they describe the chain rule like this. So in Leibniz notation, it describes the derivative of y equals, or derivative of the function y is equal to dy, derivative of y with respect to u, times the derivative of u with respect to x. Okay? So this is why I say, this is why I wrote my outside function as a function, as, as a function of u. So going back to my example, if y is equal to sine of x squared, well, the outside function, I recall, uh, I said was equivalent to sine u. The inside function was x squared. So y prime is going to be the derivative of sine u with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. And it should make sense because the outside function is just sine u. Uh, du, I guess we'll just call u equals u. And then the derivative of this would be the derivative of x, whoops, the derivative of x squared, because u is really just x squared, derivative of x squared with respect to x. This shows us then, well, the derivative of sine is cosine, so cosine u times the derivative of x squared is 2x. So y prime is 2x times cosine of u, but then we remind ourselves that u is really just x squared, like that. Okay, there you go. That's, and that's why I use the notation of u. It just reminds me that I can do this. And this form of the chain rule is Leibniz notation chain, or chain rule and Leibniz notation. <laughs> All right, 
Let's go through a couple more examples. I, I generally stick with prime notation when I go through my, when I differentiate things. So here's another one. <coughs> Excuse me. Differentiate the following. So, let's think of what is my outside function. My outside function is, uh, let's consider u is equal to x cubed minus 1. So my outside function is going to be u to the 100. My inside function is going to be uh, x cubed minus 1. That's equal to u. So my derivative, I'll use big F prime, is going to be the derivative of the outside function, or 100 times u to the power of 99, times the derivative of the inside function, which is x cubed minus 1. So this is 3x squared. After a bit of simplifying, this becomes 300 x squared times u, but then u is really just x cubed minus 1 to the power of 99. There you go. And that's the chain rule in action. Here we're sort of combining chain rule with a polynomial derivative. On to the next example. Here's a slightly more complicated one. This example we're going to use, um, well, let's write it up. Maybe we can figure out what we're going to use. So, outside function. Outside function is going to be u to the power of 8. Okay. Inside function is going to be x minus 2 over 2x plus 1. And this, remind myself, this is what equal to u. So, derivative of my function. Well, I'll take the derivative of the outside. That's derivative of this. The derivative of u to the 8 is going to be 8 then u to the 7. Then I'm going to multiply this by the derivative of the inside function. Well, the inside function derivative is going to end up needing to, we're going to end up needing to use a quotient rule, because so you have a x minus 2 divided by 2x minus, or 2x plus 1. So to remind ourselves, quotient rule was g f prime minus f g prime, all divided by g squared. 8u to the 7, well, g is 2x plus 1, so we'll put 2x plus 1 here. f prime is derivative of x minus 2, which is just 1, times f, which is x minus 2, and g prime is the derivative of 2x plus 1, which is just 2, all divided by 2x plus 1 squared. Okay, almost there. Last thing we need to do is remind ourselves that the inside of the function is, or u, sorry, u is really x minus 2 over 2x plus 1. This is all to the power of 7. And this becomes, well, I can clean this up a bit, so this will be 2x plus 1 minus x, or minus 2x plus 4 all over 2x plus 1 squared. Oops, there we go. Alright, and that's it. Oh, so I can clean this up a little bit more. Let's clean this up a little bit more. So 8, this will be x minus 2 over 2x plus 1 to the power of 7. This will be, see the 2x's cancel each other out? Oh, they do. 2x's cancel each other out, so we're left with 5 over 2x plus 1. Okay, and then this will simplify to 5 times 8, so 40. In the top, we'll have x minus 2 to the power of 7. And in the bottom, we will have, oh, there should be a squared here. We will have 2x plus 1 to the power of 7 plus 2 is 9. There you go. So that's actually simplified quite nicely. Anyways, but the important part is, can we get to this part? This part's important. Get here. Can we get here? Can we get here? Because after that, it's just a bunch of algebra. Can we get here? Okay. Alright. There you go. So is this question is an example of using chain rule in combination with product rule. On to the next one. This one's a trig example. 
in combination with an exponential example. Okay, so let's first identify what is my outside function. My outside function is going to be e to the u. My inside function is going to be cosine x. Okay. So this tells me then y prime is going to be the derivative of the outside function. Well, thankfully, derivative of e to the x is really just e to the x, or in this case, u. Inside function is cosine x, so the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, and there we have it. Negative sine x times e to the u, but then u is really just cosine x, so e to the cos x. There you go. That wasn't too difficult. So here we can combine chain rule with trig derivatives and exponential derivatives. All right. I have one last example. This is going to be kind of tricky, maybe. One last example. And we're going to differentiate the following. We're going to differentiate x plus 3 to the power of 4 times 3x cubed minus 2 to the power of 7. Okay, so we'll call this big F of x equals. Okay, and I'm going to differentiate this. Now, to differentiate an equation like this, it helps to use product rule first, because we can think of this as this whole function is f of x. This whole function is g of x. So this is really f of x times g of x. So the derivative, we have to apply chain rule, or not chain rule, product rule first, where it says product rule is f g prime plus g f prime. All right, so let's go f g prime first. So f g prime is fairly easy, x plus 3 to the 4. Then we look at g of x. g of x is a function, 3x cubed minus 2 to the power of 7. So this is very similar to the very first uh, chain rule example we did. So g of x is going to, we're going to have to apply chain rule to g of x. So let me just calculate the derivative of g of x off to the side here. So g prime of x is going to be, looking at this, so take 7, 3x cubed minus 2 to the power of 6. So notice I've taken the derivative of the outside, and then I take the derivative of the inside, which is 3x cubed minus 2. Derivative of that is going to be 9x squared. There you go. So this is the whole derivative for g prime of x. We're going to tag it on to here. So 7 times 3x cubed minus 2 to the power of 6 times 9x squared. There we go. Alright, now we tag on to it g prime, or g times f of, sorry, g times f prime. So g is 3x cubed minus 2 to the power of 7. And looking at f, well, f is another chain rule example. So I'm going to write f prime over here. f prime, so here's f is here. Take the derivative of f, this will be 4 x plus 3 to the power of 3. Then we take the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of x plus 3 is just 1, because, yeah. Derivative of x is just 1, derivative of 3 is 0, so that's why it's just 1. So the derivative of f prime happens to just be 4 times x plus 3 to the power of 3. Right. Can I clean it up a bit? Oh, I can do that a little bit. So here, 7 times 9, that's 63 x squared. You have x plus 3 to the 4, 3x cubed minus 2 to the power of 6, plus 3x cubed minus 2 to the 7, I'll put the 4 up front here, x plus 3 to the power of 3. We could factor out a bunch of things, but at this point we don't really need to. This is just fine. Okay. There we go. So there's an example, so this function here is an example of using product rule first, because they identify that we have two functions multiplying each other. And then when we take the derivative of each function, we apply chain rule. Okay. Now, chain rule can be applied in multiple, or can be applied multiple times. Like, here's another example of chain rule being multiplied, sorry, not multiplied, being applied multiple times. So let's say I want to differentiate a function like this, sine of cosine of tangent of x, like this. 
as we have basically three trig functions identified. Well, we just apply chain rule from the outside to the inside. So let's go big F of x equals as follows. So F prime of x, well, we'll take the derivative of the outside function first, which is sine. So F prime of x is going to be derivative of sine is cosine. And inside, the inside of the function doesn't change. So it's just still going to be cosine tangent x. Oops, my phone's buzzing. Okay. All right, so this is the derivative of sine. Then we take the derivative of the next most outer function, which is going to be cosine. So the derivative of cosine, well, cosine is just negative sine. And inside we keep the same, that inside of this function is tangent, tangent x. I'm going to make sure my brackets are all properly closed. Okay, then after that, we take the derivative of, I need a different color, uh, there we go. Then we take the derivative of tangent. So tangent happens to be secant squared x. And there we go. We applied chain rule first, so sine, then the next function, cosine, then next function, tangent. So here's a derivative. Okay. And remember, derivative is just a rate of change or a slope. So if you're asked to find tangent lines or normal lines, just find the slope and go from there. All right. Assignment is as follows. And if you have any questions, come see me in class.